the aerospace world is buzzing with excitement. The US has secretly tested a hypersonic weapon so advanced that it has stunned military experts and rival nations alike. This breakthrough technology is rumored to be even faster than the classified SR-72 Dark Star, the successor to the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, once the fastest plane on Earth. But what exactly did they test, and how did this cutting-edge hypersonic craft push beyond Mach 6, possibly even reaching Mach 10? Join us as we dive deep into the mind-blowing details of this cutting-edge hypersonic test, faster than SR-72, that has left experts stunned. Hypersonic aircraft and weapons might sound like something out of a sci-fi blockbuster, but they're the result of more than half a century of research, experimentation, and technological breakthroughs. While many people see hypersonic technology as a game-changer of the 21st century, the truth is that its origins stretch back to the Cold War when the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a high-stakes race for air and space dominance. For years, hypersonic technology sat on the back burner, gathering dust in secret military labs due to limited funding and a lack of immediate military applications. But today, with rising global tensions and a renewed arms race, world superpowers are racing to perfect these ultra-fast systems, which can outmaneuver traditional missile defenses and strike targets with unprecedented speed and precision. The journey toward hypersonic flight began in 1959 with the North American X-15 rocket plane, a groundbreaking experimental aircraft that still holds the record for the fastest speed ever recorded by a crewed aircraft, Mach 6.7. The X-15, launched from a B-52 bomber, proved that controlled hypersonic flight was possible, but it relied on a rocket engine which burned fuel at an unsustainable rate. This limitation made long-distance hypersonic travel nearly impossible at the time. Despite these challenges, the dream of hypersonic flight never faded. Engineers explored scramjet engines, which could theoretically sustain hypersonic speeds without the need for bulky rocket fuel. However, technical hurdles such as extreme heat generated at Mach 5 plus speeds and the need for advanced thermal protection systems kept the technology from advancing quickly. When trying to build a city bus where 90% of its total weight was just fuel sounds absurd, but that's exactly the kind of challenge early rocket-powered aircraft faced. Since they had to carry both fuel and an oxidizer to burn it, there was hardly any room left for essential systems like safety features, passenger compartments, or even advanced navigation technology. This made rocket planes not only inefficient but also wildly impractical for commercial travel. The XE-15, for example, one of the most famous rocket planes ever built, could reach speeds of Mach 6.7 but could only stay in the air for a few minutes before running out of fuel. Now this is where modern hypersonic air-breathing engines like ramjets and scramjets change the game completely. Unlike rockets, which must carry heavy tanks of liquid oxygen, these engines pull in atmospheric oxygen as they fly, making them far more fuel efficient. This efficiency is measured using a key performance factor called specific impulse, which essentially tells us how much thrust an engine produces compared to the amount of fuel it burns. The higher the specific impulse, the more efficient the engine. While rocket engines typically have a specific impulse of around 450 seconds, Air-breathing jet engines like ramjets and scramjets can exceed 1,000 seconds, meaning they can fly much farther using much less fuel. That said, not all jet propulsion systems are created equal. Turbojets, the kind of engines found in traditional fighter jets, are great at accelerating from a standstill and can reach speeds up to Mach 2. But beyond that, they become inefficient and struggle to keep up. Ramjets, on the other hand, are designed for much higher speeds but require an initial push since they can't operate at low speeds. Once moving, though, they can cruise at around Mach 3 to 4. Then there's the real speed demon, the scramjet. This cutting-edge engine can function at Mach 5+, plus, meaning a flight from New York to Tokyo could in theory take under 2 hours instead of over 12. Ramjets and scramjets can easily smash past the Mach 5 speed barrier, making them perfect for hypersonic travel. But there's a big catch, they don't work well at low speeds, which makes takeoff and landing a real headache. That's one of the biggest reasons why most hypersonic vehicles today aren't reusable. Take modern hypersonic missiles, for example. They don't just start at hypersonic speeds. 
First, they use a conventional rocket engine to climb to high altitudes and build up enough velocity. Then they either glide back down at hypersonic speeds or fire up a scramjet engine to keep the momentum going. So the big question is, why not combine a turbojet and a ramjet into one engine? That's exactly what the team at Hermius thought, and that's how they came up with their game-changing Chimera engine. And they didn't just pick that name randomly. The Chimera in Greek mythology was a mythical beast made up of different animals, a lion, a goat, and a serpent. Similarly, the Chimera engine is a hybrid, blending two different propulsion systems into one. This turbine-based combined cycle engine is a total game-changer. It seamlessly switches between turbojet mode and ramjet mode. That's what powers their cutting-edge aircraft, the quarter horse, letting it take off like a normal plane and then rocket into hypersonic speeds without breaking a sweat. And of course, hypersonic speeds generate insane amounts of heat. But the engineers at Hermius have thought of that too, designing the quarter horse to handle extreme temperatures so it doesn't overheat mid-flight. It's a revolutionary step toward reusable hypersonic aircraft, something that was once considered nearly impossible. The Chimera engine created by Hermius has a standout feature, a pre-cooler. It is like a high-tech air conditioner that cools down the air before it hits the turbojet. This might sound simple, but it's a game-changer because it helps Hermius maximize the engine's performance before it transitions into scramjet mode. This is especially important because we're talking about hypersonic speeds, those over Mach 5. These speeds are the next frontier for military tech, and the Pentagon has been betting big on combined cycle engines that can operate both as turbojets and scramjets to achieve these extreme velocities. Hermius is a relatively small startup, but they've managed to jump right into the heart of cutting-edge hypersonic tech. While huge corporations or government agencies would typically take decades and massive budgets to create something this advanced, Hermius did it in just 21 months with an astonishing budget of only $18 million. That's a fraction of what people expect for a project of this magnitude. For comparison, the United States Air Force's hypersonic technology demonstrator had a budget of over $300 million and it took years to develop. Hermius has shown that a little creativity and efficiency can achieve huge leaps in aerospace. When it came time to build their turbine-based combined cycle engine, Hermius didn't just pick any engine. They went with the General Electric J85 turbojet. This engine has been trusted for decades, powering military aircraft like the Northrop F-5 Freedom Fighter and the Teva 38 Talon, which are still in use today. The J-85 has a legendary track record for reliability and performance in various missions, from tactical fighter jets to training planes. It's an engine with a serious pedigree. Hermius didn't just stop at the original Chimera engine. After debuting the first version, they were already working on Chimera 2, a more advanced iteration, just one year later. And when someone considers that major aerospace companies often take years, sometimes decades, to even dream of launching a new version of an engine, Hermius's rapid pace of innovation is nothing short of extraordinary. This time, the team decided to go with the mighty Pratt & Whitney F-100 engine, the same powerhouse that's been propelling two of America's most famous fighter jets, the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle and the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. These engines are real veterans, recently celebrating 50 years of continuous service and more than 30,000 flight hours. They've proven themselves in some of the most demanding situations, from intense combat missions to air patrols across the globe. The new project isn't just about upgrading an old favorite, it's about pushing the limits of what's possible. The Hermes hypersonic aircraft is a next-level design that's being developed to revolutionize both defense capabilities and national security. The aircraft is no longer a mere step up from existing models, it's a giant leap forward in aerospace engineering. Instead of being a quarter horse, this new design is the dark horse of the sky, built to take on an entirely new set of challenges. Hermius is designed to fly at speeds greater than Mach 5, five times the speed of sound, which is mind-blowing. But it's not just about raw speed. To achieve that kind of velocity, an aircraft must be built to withstand unimaginable temperatures due to air friction at those speeds. This is why the engineering team is working tirelessly to ensure the aircraft's body can handle the extreme conditions of hypersonic flight. And it's not just about speed. 
Hermes has its eyes set on breaking the record of the legendary Lockheed State Route 71 Blackbird, which holds the record for the fastest manned aircraft, reaching an astounding top speed of Mach 3.3. Hermes isn't just pushing the limits of speed, it's reaching for the edge of the stratosphere. This next-generation aircraft is being designed to soar at jaw-dropping altitudes of 80,000 to 85,000 feet, more than twice as high as commercial airliners, which typically cruise between 35,000 and 40,000 feet. At such extreme heights, the atmosphere is incredibly thin, making conventional flight dynamics far more challenging. Jet engines struggle to get enough oxygen, wings generate less lift, and temperatures swing between blistering heat and bone-chilling cold. To put this into perspective, the legendary State Route 71 Blackbird, one of the fastest aircraft ever built, often flew at 85,000 feet to our Trun missiles and avoid enemy radar detection. At those altitudes, pilots had to wear full pressure suits similar to what astronauts use because the outside air pressure was so low that their blood could boil without protection. Now Hermes is aiming to go even faster and more efficiently, which means overcoming some of the biggest technical hurdles in aviation history. Hypersonic flight, traveling at over five times the speed of sound, creates enormous amounts of friction and heat. The temperatures on the aircraft's surface can exceed 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt aluminum and weaken even high-strength titanium. That's why engineers are developing new heat-resistant alloys, ceramic composites, and cooling systems that can withstand these punishing conditions. On top of that, conventional jet engines simply can't handle hypersonic speeds. To solve this, researchers are exploring scramjet technology, which compresses incoming air at incredible speeds without the need for traditional rotating turbines. This could make sustained hypersonic travel not just possible but efficient. To put it into perspective, traveling at Mach 5 means someone blazing through the sky at over 3,000 miles per hour. At that velocity, the air around the aircraft heats up so much that ordinary materials wouldn't stand a chance. So the engineering team had to rack their brains and dig deep into the science of heat-resistant materials to find the perfect fit for their high-speed machine. They explored some of the toughest materials out there, titanium, nickel alloys, and superalloys, the same kind used in jet engines and spacecraft. These materials are built to withstand insane temperatures, from 1000 degrees Fahrenheit to over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The quarter horse's sleek streamlined look isn't just eye-catching. It's a textbook example of aerodynamic genius. Its design boasts sharp blade-like edges that smoothly integrate into the aircraft's body, creating a seamless